Okay, in this segment, you're going to meet a guy named Reed Timmer. Now, Reed was a guest with me on The Tonight Show. He's a storm chaser. That's what he does. He chases storms, he analyzes them, and he documents them, okay? Now, on The Tonight Show, we met him. On this show, we'll meet him again, but we'll also meet his vehicle. It's called the Dominator. It's a heavily modified Ford truck, well, modified to withstand tornadoes and hurricanes, if that's even possible. Oh, and you also meet a vehicle called the Rollagon. Now, I saw this thing, and I'm still not sure what it is. So, yeah, you be the judge. We all know there are some dangerous jobs out there that require very tough, very specialized vehicles. But there's one job that really takes that idea to the limit. The TV weatherman. No, not the dorky guy that stands in front of a green screen and points. Weatherman like this guy. Hi. Got a car here. I'm on a severe storm just to the west side of Lamar right now. Whoa! A man like that needs a vehicle that's tornado tough. Hey, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. I mean, the last time we were together, I guess, it was 2011. You were on The Tonight Show with me. Yeah, it was eight storm seasons ago. That's right, I guess. Now, you did storm chases for four years. I thought it was just a fascinating program because you can't fake it. You know, so much <laughs> reality TV, OK, you do this and I'll do But with a storm, you don't even know what's going to happen. Yeah, you certainly can't uh, uh, fake a tornado when you're out there. Reed Timmer. He's probably the most extreme meteorologist you'll ever meet. Shoot, shoot. He's made his name chasing tornadoes, hurricanes, and blizzards all across the country. What the hell are you doing? I got this under control. And to aid in his incredibly dangerous profession, he's developed a series of one-of-a-kind storm-chasing vehicles. Now this started life as what? One of the big, uh, the big Ford trucks? Yes, this is Dominator 3. It started off as a Ford F350. Right. Uh, it's a diesel engine, 6.7 liter. It's all stock in there, but it does have an airbag suspension so we can drop the whole vehicle flush to the ground right. and that prevents the wind from getting underneath. And it also has hydraulic powered spikes and those can go into the ground. Even the runway here is six or eight inches and that's what keeps us anchored to the ground inside the tornado. So this is the inside. And this armor right here is 16 gauge steel okay. with a polyethylene Kevlar composite on the outside. And so when projectiles are coming in at 150 or 200 miles an hour, they'll get deflected and they won't penetrate the inside of the Dominator 3. And what does this thing weigh? Well, it weighs 11,000 pounds. Okay. And so at a very heavy weight and the aerodynamic shape deflecting the wind, that's what keeps us anchored to the ground. So this is the window lift system. Okay. The double pane gives it added protection, and the lever on the right is how we drop it down to the ground. So that, those are the spikes actually going into the runway, which we didn't want to do. I was right. specifically told not to do that, but I made holes oh, accidentally okay. there, I think. But yeah, we don't, but we do want to do that when the tornado's coming. And then we can measure data that other people can't safely collect inside the tornado. That's our anemometer up there. That measures the wind speed and the direction. Building the Dominator didn't come cheap. The price tag? About $750,000. You could get 10 Z06 Corvettes for that. Now, obviously, in Southern California, you don't really get tornadoes here. But I'm thinking, where and how could we create the wind of a tornado? And I got an idea. Reed claims he's built a tornado-proof vehicle. Well, that means we got to put it to the test with jet power. This L39 Albatross is a jet engine that can produce winds up to 1,300 miles per hour. To prove its power, we've recruited this poor, unsuspecting old beater. Show you what we're talking about. This car's in trouble. Great. I think we proved this experiment is significantly dangerous. Let's give it a try. Ready to go? Yes. Let's do it. It's going to be intense in here. Let's go tornado hunt. We even got a stunt coordinator in the back with an oxygen tank. 
That's Greg. What's there to worry about? I've had a good life. Yeah, you got oxygen masks. Yeah. Where are those? Just on the side? Right here. OK. Oh, there we go. I want to find that tornado that killed my paw. Perfect. Get ready to, to deploy. All right. Put it in park. Put in the brake. There we go. We can handle up to 200 miles per hour with this, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Hey, here comes okay. the wind. You feel it bounce a little. That's a good wind. Well, we're getting some good wind now. Whoa, let's feel that. Oh, we're, we're hitting it now. Whole thing is shaking. This thing's moving 11 tons. And of course, it wouldn't be a real tornado without some debris flying at us. And here it comes. Basketball. Luckily, those basketballs are missing us. <laughs> and here it comes. Whoa. Oh, wait a I tell you, we're very good at dodging basketballs. Here's the Whoa, there we go. Whole thing is shaking. Here we go. Oh, there we go. We should put our oxygen on, I think. OK, I'm all right. OK. <laughs> Point it into the wind. We can handle big time wind. Yeah. 200, 250 miles per hour. If it was turning even sideways, we'd roll over, wouldn't we? Yeah. Probably. Side wind, we'd have big problems. Yeah, yeah. We're bouncing around now. Now we got to drop it down, I think. Let's drop it down. Drop it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 